Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to Consuming Cinema, a show about making and pairing food and drinks from popular movies and TV shows. This week, we're making and pairing Popeye's Chicken with Peppermint Schnapps from Little Nicky. If you haven't seen Little Nicky, it's a 2000 fantasy comedy directed by Stephen Brill, which follows Little Nicky, one of three sons of the devil who must travel to Earth to stop his evil brothers, Cassius and Adrian, from permanently corrupting the planet by trapping them in a magical flask that they must drink from. On Earth, Nicky meets a bulldog from hell named Mr. Beefy, played by the father of Adam Sandler's real-life dog and best man at his wedding, Meatball. Beefy teaches Nikki important human lessons, like how to eat, specifically Popeye's chicken. Put it in your mouth. Now move your teeth up and down. Good, num nuts. Now you gotta tilt your head back and let the meat slide down your throat hole. <coughs> Easy, don't choke. Popeye's chicken is fucking awesome. Nikki and his newfound friends try to trick Adrian into drinking from the flask by offering him some of his favorite alcohol we see him drink throughout the movie. Peppermint schnapps. But before we get to those peppermint schnapps, we first have to start our chicken, broken down into eight pieces so as to replicate Nikki's order. What are you talking about, man? I'm talking about an eight piece, let's go. And to break down this chicken, we'll start by removing the legs, and to remove the legs, we first want to cut around the thigh by first First making a slit down the chicken's groin area. Then we're gonna bend that leg back, exposing this joint here. After which we'll slice down the left side of that joint, removing the leg and thigh. Then we're gonna do the same thing to the other leg, exposing that joint, cutting down the right side of it in order to remove the leg. Next we're gonna remove the wings using a similar technique, by first cutting off the right side of the connective joint, then pulling that wing back to expose said joint, and then cutting around the joint to remove the wing. Then we're gonna do the same thing to the other chicken wing. Now it's time for the most gruesome part of the process, removing the chicken's spine. So what you wanna do here is cut down the connective tissue between the spine and breast, and then we're gonna pull that spine back and finish removing the spine by slicing the remaining cartilage and skin. Be sure to save that neck and spine as they can be made into a terrific chicken stock later down the road. Before we separate the breasts, we're first gonna put our wings into a bowl and then separate the legs and thighs by making a slit in between the two, pulling them apart, and then cutting around that joint, separating the leg from the thigh. And we'll simply do the same thing to the other leg and thigh before putting those legs and thighs into the bowl along with the wings. And now we're gonna separate the breasts by first flipping them over, and then what you wanna do is you wanna cut down the middle of this breastplate. Even if your knife is sharp, you're still gonna need to apply some decent pressure, but once you crack it, separating the rest of the breast is rather easy, and there you have it. Two perfect bone-in chicken breasts, which we'll also put into the bowl where we will begin our brine, which starts with two tablespoons of salt, along with one tablespoon of dried dill, in addition to two tablespoons of annatto oil, which I made by combining three tablespoons of annatto seeds with a quarter cup of neutral oil, and then you want to heat that oil until it starts to bubble, at which point you want to immediately cut off the heat, and once you remove the oil from the heat, you want to let it sit until it's cool, after which we'll strain the annatto oil into a separate container, so we'll add two tablespoons of the annatto oil to our brine, followed by one cup of hot sauce, for which we're using the official hot sauce of Popeyes, Louisiana brand, in addition to two cups of buttermilk. Now we're gonna simply mix all those ingredients together with our hands, and once that brine is all mixed together, we wanna cover the bowl with some saran wrap, after which we're gonna let that chicken brine in the fridge overnight or for at least 10 hours. I also wanna mention that this Popeye's recipe comes courtesy of the channel Brown Girl's Kitchen, whose video you can watch here, and is easily the best Popeye's video I could find on YouTube, and does a much better job with this recipe than I do. While our chicken marinates overnight, we're now gonna make our Popeye's biscuits, which start in a large bowl to which we'll add two cups of all-purpose flour, followed by a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, in addition to a tablespoon of baking powder, as well as one and a quarter teaspoons of salt, and finally, a half a tablespoon of sugar. Then we're gonna whisk all these dry ingredients together until everything is nicely incorporated, and then we're gonna add a half a cup of unsalted butter, which should be frozen ahead of time, and either grated like I did or cut into small bits. Then, using a fork, we will mix that frozen butter into our dry ingredients, after which we're gonna add a cup of cold buttermilk, 
and then we want to mix that buttermilk into our dry ingredients until it forms a shaggy sticky dough. And once that dough is formed, we're then going to flour our work surface and transfer that dough onto our floured surface. Then what you want to do is form the dough into a thick rectangular shape, after which we want to fold the dough onto itself before reshaping it into another rectangle. And you want to just continue repeating this folding process about five times, being careful to be gentle with your dough so as it'll make for a fluffier biscuit. After which, we're going to use a rolling pin to roll out this dough until it's about a half an inch thick. Once the dough is all rolled out, we're going to need a parchment lined baking sheet as well as a small circular pastry cutter. And you want to press down on that dough, making sure that you flour your cutter before you do. And you also want to resist the urge to twist it like I did as you press down. But rather, what you want to do is peel the dough away from each biscuit before putting them onto a baking sheet. Then you want to just repeat this process with the other biscuits, pressing down on the pastry cutter and peeling away the dough to form each biscuit. And after you cut all of the available biscuits, then you can reshape the dough back into a rectangle, repeat that folding process a couple of times before then cutting out the remaining biscuits. And once your biscuits are all formed, we're then going to bake them in a 450 degree oven for between 13 and 15 minutes until golden brown. Now we're going to make my personal favorite side dish from Popeyes, their red beans and rice, which starts with one can of kidney beans, the juices and beans of which will both add to a small pot, followed by some bacon fat, which is something I reserved from our egg sandwich episode you can watch here. And we're going to add about a tablespoon or two. Then we're going to also add a splash of our Louisiana hot sauce, followed by a half teaspoon of paprika, as well as a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, in addition to a half teaspoon of onion powder, followed by some liquid smoke, which we last used in our Kahlua pork episode that you can watch here. I'll say around two teaspoons, as this ingredient makes it really taste like Popeye's red beans and rice, and let it come to a boil, before then adding a little bit of salt, as well as a little freshly cracked pepper. And then we're going to let those beans come to a boil again, then we're going to use a potato masher to mash these beans. But you don't want the beans to be completely mashed, as we still want a few to be intact in order to replicate the texture of Popeye's. And once those beans get close to the texture we're looking for, we're then going to set the red beans on a separate burner to simmer while we make our chicken. And once we remove the chicken from the fridge, we're first going to strain out that excess brine before then adding in half of our spice mix, which consists of a half a tablespoon of salt, a half a tablespoon of MSG, one tablespoon of sugar, a half a tablespoon of cumin, a half tablespoon of granulated garlic, a half a tablespoon of dried mustard, a half a tablespoon of paprika, a half tablespoon of celery salt, a half tablespoon of onion powder, a half tablespoon of turmeric, one and a half tablespoons of white pepper, and one and a half tablespoons of cayenne pepper. And we're simply going to mix that all together. Then, as previously mentioned, add half of that spice mix directly into our chicken, which we will mix into the chicken before setting aside while we prep one cup of all purpose flour, along with one cup of cornstarch, in addition to a teaspoon of baking soda, as well as the other half of our spice mixture. Then simply mix that all together. Now into another dish, we're gonna combine four eggs, as well as a quarter cup of water, or in my case, buttermilk, as well as a dash of our Louisiana hot sauce and mix that all together. Now to fry our chicken, I personally combined vegetable shortening along with vegetable oil, but using only oil will work just fine. I'm also going to use a candy thermometer to keep track of the oil's temperature. And while that's heating up, we can see that our biscuits came out beautiful, and all we need to do now is brush them with a little bit of melted butter. And now that our oil has come to 340 degrees, we're going to bread our chicken by first dipping it into the dry mix, then into the wet mix, and then back into the dry dry mix, before then placing it in our 340 degree oil to fry for around 12 minutes. And once the chicken is finished, we'll set each piece on a wire rack to cool, and then we'll simply repeat that process with our other pieces of chicken, dipping each into the dry mix, then into the wet mix, and then back into the dry mix before frying in our hot oil. So continue the frying process, but just make sure that while you do, you don't accidentally almost start a grease fire like I did. But after a brief cleanup, we are back in business. And while our chicken fries, I thought it would be apropos for the show to mention that the Popeye's name is one that was inspired by a famous fictional character, 
And no, it's not the character that you might expect, but rather Popeye's founder Alvin C. Copeland named the chain after Gene Hackman's protagonist from William Friedkin's The French Connection, Jimmy Popeye Doyle. So we'll continue frying our chicken, and once every piece of chicken is all beautifully fried, we're then gonna head on over to plate. Now, to plate our peppermint schnapps, there's only one vessel that made sense to drink them from, which is a replica flask from the movie, which I purchased on Amazon through a link which I'll put below, although I don't necessarily necessarily recommend purchasing one, as when I first filled this flask, it had several leaks, which I was luckily able to seal with some food grade resin. Now, the type of peppermint schnapps we'll be filling this flask with is rumple mints, which while it has an easy to drink sweet flavor, packs a really sneaky punch with its alcohol content that, as we'll see, you want to be careful with. And to fill our magic flask, we're gonna need a flask funnel, like this one. So we'll place our flask funnel in the opening of the flask, and then we're gonna pour in around 4 ounces of our peppermint schnapps, being careful not to spill, although it's not the end of the world if you do, and once your schnapps are in the flask, we're then gonna set it aside while we plate our Popeyes, and we'll be plating our Popeyes in this Popeyes box, which I made using a modern day Popeyes box that I did some arts and crafts work on using some templates I made, as well as a hot glue gun. In order to make it look like the early 2000s Popeyes look we see in the movie, and to plate our red beans and rice, we'll be using this small bowl, into which we'll add a few scoops of our red beans, as well as a big scoop of white rice, which I sort of made a mess of, but Bailey luckily cleaned it up for me. And then we're just gonna top that red beans and rice off with a little bit of dried parsley. Now we'll place our chicken in the Popeye's box, putting these slightly less attractive pieces at the bottom, and then topping it off with our nice beautiful remaining pieces. And then all that's left to do is top it with one of our beautiful biscuits. And at long last, your Popeyes with peppermint schnapps is finally done. Now there's nothing left to do but to taste it. But that's when things went a bit south. Deep south. <laughs> Now, I'd like to tell you that Cassius or Adrian mind-wrestled me into a deep, uncontrollable slumber, causing me to miss the tasting and review segment. But what actually happened is that I drank too much peppermint schnapps and ended up passing out on the couch before I could finish the video. I'm wasted! <laughs> So, the next morning, hungover and out of focus, both literally and figuratively, I reheated and put the box of Popeyes back together and begun my taste test, before realizing just how out of focus the camera was. But luckily, the magical taste of the Popeyes and biscuits suddenly made everything clearer. And I have to say, even the next day, this chicken really was phenomenal. The chicken was still crispy, tender, and perfectly seasoned. Popeye's chicken is the shiznit! And the biscuits were flaky, buttery pillows of deliciousness. But the real star of the show, for me at least, were these red beans and rice, which if you're as big of a fan of Popeye's red beans as I am, I highly recommend making. You can do it! But how does this Popeyes pair with peppermint schnapps? Well, surprisingly, the cool sweetness of the peppermint schnapps is actually a nice compliment to the spicy salinity of the Popeyes. But I felt there was another drink mentioned in the movie that might pair even better. I'm talking, of course, about the cocktail that brought Nikki's parents together. It was a long time ago at this Heaven Hell mixer. I remember that night you had like four daiquiris. And if you want to see how to make a daiquiri, check out our Wedding Crashers episode here. And while the daiquiri was good and pairs well with just about anything. Don't think I forgot about how crazy you get after a few daiquiris. What I was really craving right now to pair with this Popeyes in my tremendously hungover state was a nice refreshing Coca-Cola. But as I drank this Coca-Cola, I gotta say, something about it tasted a bit funny. This Coke tastes like Pepsi. Well, that's just because I wanted another excuse to use my flask funnel one more time in this episode. You changed a Coke into a Pepsi. So, while I was a bit disappointed in my final results and may end up redoing this episode in the future, despite that adversity, no matter what you choose to pair with your Popeyes, it will definitely be worthy of two thumbs up. If you like the channel, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Please leave any video suggestions in the comments below. Full recipes will be included in a link in the video description. Follow us on all forms of social media at Consuming Cinema. And don't forget to join us next week when we make a pairing from American Psycho. And as always, thank you for watching.